Welcome to another episode of Frequently Asked Questions in Commercial Roofing. My name is Jennifer, and I'm here with my colleague, Jim. Hello, everyone. So, Jennifer, what's today's question? Today's question is short and sweet. What is a roof coating? Well, this sounds pretty straightforward. Not so fast. There's lots to discuss. We'll talk about roof coatings and liquid applied roof membranes. Okay, why would we talk about liquid applied roof membranes if we're discussing roof coatings today? Because each use similar, if not the same base material, so we want to avoid any confusion. And we want to use each for its best application. Okay, so before we get too much further, it sounds like we should define these. Can you define roof coatings for us? Absolutely. So the definition for coatings is a fluid applied adhered coating used for roof maintenance or repair, or as part of an assembly. Now typically, roof coatings are installed on top of an existing roof membrane. Okay, that sounds pretty straightforward. I like it. So can you define liquid applied roof membrane for us? Sure. A liquid applied roof membrane is a roof membrane constructed in place using a liquid resin and a fabric reinforcement. It's applied directly over insulation, coverboard, or an existing roof membrane in a recover scenario. Okay, so that's really helping define the differences. Are these GAS definitions though? No, they're not. Roof coating comes directly from the International Building Code, where the definition for a liquid applied roof membrane comes from the Roof Coating Manufacturers Association. So these are really solid definitions. Okay, we've defined things, so let's get a little bit more technical with this discussion. So, you good with that? Great. Okay, so a coating has a number of uses. Although it's not a weatherproofing membrane, it certainly is used to extend the life of an existing roof by providing protection from the elements. Absolutely. And a coating can minimize or avoid the need to tear off an existing roof and avoid operational disruptions. It can also extend the life of the roof. We have a lot of asphalt roofs in place right now and using a coating is an effective application. So that's impressive. What else can a coating do? Coatings can also change the color of a roof. Why would we do that? So the general idea is that we want to coat a dark roof to make it lighter and more reflective. Most roof coatings are white and highly reflective. Simply put, this helps reflect the energy from the sun, reduce the amount of heat absorbed into the building, and potentially reduce air conditioning costs. And we should point out that actual energy savings are going to vary based on climate zone, which is geography, and utility rates and things like that. But it certainly sounds like a roof coating with a nice, effective thermal layer in a roof is really gonna go a long ways to help save energy use in a building. So true, Jim. Another important point is that coatings are not intended to repair roof leaks. Before we install a roof coating, it's good roofing practice to check for trapped moisture and repair leaks and any existing damage. Great points. So let's switch gears now. Let's talk about liquid applied roof membranes. When would they be used? The primary function of a liquid applied roof membrane is to protect the building from the elements, not just extend its service life. So they're very different from coatings. Okay, so it sounds like from a long-term point of view, we could use roof coatings actually to help maintain our liquid applied roof membranes. Therefore, we avoid a roof tear off. Exactly. Liquid applied materials are also transported in buckets, which fit easily into elevators. So when we're re-roofing an operational building or a skyscraper, a liquid applied roof membrane can be a logical option. Excellent. So we can install these over many substrates, over many types of roofs. Two good examples are existing metal panel roofs and existing modified bitumens. In both cases, it'll help extend the life of those roofs. However, the ability of a liquid applied roof membrane to protect against the elements depends directly on the substrate to which it's adhered. If we have too much movement at a crack, a transition, an insulation bore joint, this can damage the membrane. Okay, so again, really good points. And now that we've worked through some of the technical differences between these two products, why don't we talk a little bit more about some of the installation differences? Sure. A liquid applied roof membrane starts with the application of a base or foundation layer. And we broom in the fabric reinforcement and encapsulate that with another layer of base coat. 
Then we add two or more layers of top coat, which gives us our seamless membrane. Excellent, and a roof coating is installed by brushing, rolling, or spraying a layer of base coat and a layer of top coat. So pretty significant differences there. Regardless of which membrane or which system type you use, you still want to do proper preparation of the substrate, which really means it needs to be clean and dry. You have to check whether or not you need to use a primer or not. And as you've said, we need to repair any damage, repair any leaks before we put either system down. So true. A liquid applied roof membrane, depending on its substrate, may require additional preparation at penetrations, transitions, bore joints, any place that we could anticipate movement. Additional reinforcement might also be necessary in the base level. So a good way to think about this, a roof coating is used on existing membranes. A liquid applied roof membrane is used for new roofs, re-roofing, or recovering an existing roof. Exactly. Both can be the roof surface, both are restorative, but a coating is more of a maintenance item where a liquid applied roof membrane is just that, a new membrane. Excellent. Great discussion today, Jennifer. Thanks for joining us today. Stay tuned for more episodes of Frequently Asked Questions in Commercial Roofing.